we actually started dating because I never thought I was going to be able, I was going to date him because every time he was asking me out, he always came with his friend Kit Kat. I only once just found out at his funeral that uh, Kit Kat was actually the one who was sending him, sending me the messages that Genius was talking yes, about. I, I didn't know that. All the time I thought I was talking to Genius, but he was sending his best friend to text because he was, um, you know, his English was not that good and being a, a Debele girl and he was Shona, we couldn't really communicate in that in the native language. So hence his friend had to do that. I mean, imagine all the years the friend was communicating with me, and yet I thought I was communicating with him. So I was literally in a relationship with both of them. But anyway, we then started dating, I think 2009. And um, look, the age, he always said to me, age is nothing but a number. And... I think the first two years were a challenge, but I ended up accepting it that, look, he's younger than me. That is what he wants. That is what I wanted. And we started dating. We had a very good relationship. I think the basis of our relationship was friendship because we're more of friends more than anything else. Everything else was added on, but we're closer and tighter as friends than, um, than the actual relationship. Which is why even when we went our separate ways in 2018, we still remained very close friends and people never understood why we're still friends. Some others are saying they broke up, others are saying they didn't break up, others are saying we're together. We, we remained friends till the last day. Okay, so Zodwa, when that phone call came on Sunday, uh, early Sunday of the 8th of November, 2020, I know it's difficult to ask this, but how did you feel? You know what, when the phone call came, I didn't believe. I actually, I was called by Remo, I think, as he got to the accident scene. He called, said, Zodwa, Genius has been involved in a car accident. And I said, what? Normally when I sleep, I put my phone on silent. But that particular night, for, for one reason or the other, I, my phone was not on silent. He had called me around 1 a.m. in the morning because... Um, you know, Genius, when he went to the club, he would call at any time because he wanted everyone to club with him. But I was not one of those girls that loved clubbing. And also, you know, I, I'm, I, I've outgrown that life. You know, so I, I wouldn't go clubbing. He would call, come, let's do this, he would phone. So he phoned me at one in the morning, that particular Sunday. And he was just asking stupid questions, Genius being Genius. And then when Remo called me, I couldn't believe it. He says, Genius has had an accident and he just started crying. And I said, is Genius okay? He said, no, Genius is dead. Where are you? I'm on Borodell Road. He didn't, couldn't tell me which part of Borodell Road. I, I, you know, I, I didn't know what to do. I just jumped out of bed, went out of my room. I told my kids. My eldest daughter just started throwing up. The younger one started vomiting as well. I didn't know what was going on. I went downstairs wearing my pyjamas, got into the car. I realized I was wearing pyjamas. I went back up. I changed. I tried to drive. I couldn't drive. I had to ask my driver. Fortunately, my driver was at home. Like, look, can you drive me? Genius has just had a car accident. I told everyone else. His aunt was at my house that weekend. And, um, and one of his bro younger brother's wives was also at my house that same, that, same, that same day. So I just told them. And then I just drove off. I went to the accident scene. When I got there, I couldn't believe. I thought maybe he was going to wake up. I got there. I tried to go to his, to, to his body. He was lifeless. They'd covered him with leaves. It was, it, it was you know, I don't wish that on anybody. I don't wish that on, any, on anybody. He, he, the, the, the other people that died with him, it was painful to hear the screams and people. I, I got there literally, I think less than about 10, 15 minutes after the accident had happened. It was painful. It still is painful. It's really difficult for us all. The family is very difficult. Genius was very close to me. We we're quite close to each other. People, like they say, they would never understand the relationship I had with Genius. No one can ever understand that. Up to the day of his death, the previous weekend before he died, I went for a function um, in his area. And then after the function, I decided, oh, let me go and see Genius. I've not seen him in a while. I think I've not seen him in a week or so. I went there on a Saturday. I go to his house. Usually, I, I would never just go to his house. Just like we just not come to mind. We would phone each other. Are you okay? Are you free? Can I come through? I would go and visit him. So that Saturday, I just went to visit him. He was shocked to see me by his gate. I said, no, it's okay. I've just come to see you. Check if you're okay. It's been a while. 
We got there, I think it was around 3, 4 in the afternoon. I spent literally the whole afternoon into, into the night, around 11, 12. Then I came back home. He was now going to the club. That's actually the last time I saw Genius. It was, it's like I went there to say goodbye. I have no regrets. At least I, I, I got to spend some time with him. I spent a good four, five, six hours with him. We had dinner. And then he went to the club. Then I went home. And fine, I spoke to Genius. He's one of those people that every day of my life, after my exercise, 6 a.m., I'm done. First person I call is Genius. If I didn't call him by half past six, he would call. Wang, the AP, are you okay? Is everything okay? What's going on today? That was Genius for you. We had a very good relationship. We understood each other. I don't think there will be anyone that we, I can ever, or any friend or male friend that can get me the way Genius got me. Genius understood me that even before I lied to him about anything, he said, Ah, one, we are lying to me. Why are you saying that? I know you are lying. He knew me very well. He read me like a book. That's genius for you. But God's time, always God's time. He took him when we we're not expecting. He's the least people. I remember when I was still staying with him in Domboshawa, he used to say, this is where I want you to be buried. This is where we are going to be buried. And he always believed I was going to die before him. I think maybe because of the age difference. He always thought I was going to die before him. But unfortunately, he went before me. And I have got no regrets. He was a good man. We shared what we shared. And I would do it over again. So Zodwa, were you really married to Geneva? Well, on the time of his death, we were, we were divorced. We were no longer living together. We got engaged, he paid his bride price, we never had a white wedding, but um, traditionally, yes. Okay, and how was your um, separation like? Uh, was your separation amicable? It was very amicable, that's why, I mean, if it was rough, I'm sure you guys, you know social media in Zimbabwe. People don't talk, they still said so much rubbish. We agreed to disagree. I was not happy. He, he didn't want me to leave. But for some reasons, uh, best known that I cannot share publicly. I mean, he's, he's not here to defend himself. So even if I say it, what we agreed, what we did not agree, he's not here to defend himself. So I'm not going, I would rather not talk about them. We agreed with Genius. We went our separate ways, but we remained, which is why we remained friends. He came to my house whenever he wanted. He had a very good relationship with my kids. Sometimes I would come home, I would find him having lunch or having dinner with the girls. They loved him to bits, especially the younger girl. My younger girl, Melissa, was, I think, five years when I started dating Genius. So literally, Genius is the father that she, that she knew, is the father that brought her, which is why she calls her dad. You know, being a father to somebody doesn't mean you're a biological father. You can be a father because you've raised the child up. Genius raised Musi up for me. He was there when Musi was a baby until now she's 19 years of age. And the only father that she really know is Genius. Fine, she has a biological dad who is in England, but Genius was always there. Genius knows Wussy, even Precious, more than their biological father. The, I know many people say the biological father is dead. He's not. He's alive. He's in England there. He's there in England. He's, he, he, he did not pass away. He's a, he's, he is much alive. Okay, Zotwa, I mean, we all knew Genius Jinimbi as a playboy. I mean, that is something. I mean, for his age, he was still growing up. He's someone who really wanted to have fun. How did you deal with his many girlfriends? To be honest with you, I never met one, one girl of Genius. I heard he had girlfriends. People told me, we've seen him with this one, we've seen him that one. He had some, too much respect for me. He would never bring the girlfriends in front of me. He would never flaunt them in front of me. If I met up with him with a girl, the girl was either Kitty's or Brian's or Dino's or Remo's. It was never his girlfriend. And the girlfriends, I don't know whether I can say it's stupid of them, because I would never allow my men to introduce me to their woman as somebody else's uh, 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 girlfriend. I would never allow that. But for them, they did. They allowed that to happen. Even when I separated with Genius, if any time I went to his house, if there were girls there, they would be sneaked out. He would hide them. I would never allow that to happen. So with me, he, he never showed me that, that side of him. I knew he was a player, but I never caught him red-handed. That I knew that my man, yo, I need to have a strong heart. 
I was supposed to have a strong heart. I had a strong heart. Genius played. He enjoyed playing. He enjoyed putting. He enjoyed his life. I'm sure he actually has no regrets because there's nothing he did not do under this earth. There is nothing, absolutely nothing that genius did not do. He traveled the world. He played the most. He did everything that he wanted to do. But with Zodwa, Zodwa was always a wife. She must stay at home. The only place he would take me to is restaurants. We go and eat. That's all he did. Or we go to church together. That's all I was good for. He would tell me, you want to go clubbing? I only go to the club with bitches. Excuse the language. That's exactly what Genius would talk. So he went with the bitches to the club. The wife stayed at home. That was, wow. those were his words. Wow. Okay. So, so did you ever have like any girls calling you or stressing you that we are no. dating Janimbi and stuff? Never. Those they never, no one, no one ever called me. And I also never called them. I mean, I would never reduce myself to their levels. Never, ever. I'm a woman of uh, very high status. I value my life so much. I value myself. I love myself. I would never reduce myself to the levels of the girls that he dated. All right. So, and then there's an issue of people saying that uh, Jinimbi had a snake that was vomiting money. Um, <laughs> What can you say about I that? wish, I really but wish that was true. Did, so do I, if he did, uh, please, I need you to tell me where I really so wish, I, I really it. wish, like right now, I really wish he had that snake because I will inherit it. It would vomit that money for me. But I lived, I mean, look, if a snake can vomit money, Josie, it means I must not put as much work as I'm putting now because I've got easy money that just come. A snake will just vomit. I just pick the money. I go and buy a blue, a blue piton. I buy an LV shoe. I buy Gucci. I buy whatever I want because it's easy money. But genius was a hard worker. That boy did not sleep. He worked throughout. Genius would go to Zambia to go and buy gas. He would go to Congo to look for new business ventures. He, he went everywhere. He would go to Mozambique. He went everywhere. As far as I knew him, Genius would leave me. He lived between Zimbabwe and South Africa. I would go to South Africa. I never saw anything amiss in his house. Anything that showed that Genius had a snake. I never... I mean, if he had a snake, it meant I knew about the snake. Because if he then went to South Africa and left me in Zimbabwe for a month, I needed to feed the snake. Otherwise, the snake would feed on me. So I never came across that snake, if ever it was there. Even if I went to South Africa, I never saw the snake. So I don't know where these people... And the problem with us Africans, an African person can never be wealthy because of hard work. You have to have had juju or something that makes you rich. Yet, if, you, if genius was white, I don't think anyone would be talking about juju or snakes or anything. He was just a hard worker who enjoyed his life, who enjoyed his money, who enjoyed his fun. That was genius for you. Snakes, I don't know nothing about them. There's so many snakes in Zimbabwe. Those that say he had a snake that vomited, go and get your own snake and make it vomit money for you. And see if you'll be able to get the money that is coming out of a python. And use that money. I don't think anyone can stand a snake. No matter how small or how big. No one can stand a snake. People will run away from a snake. Let alone stay with a snake in the house. How can one stay with a snake in the house? It's not possible. The guy was just a hard worker. That's all he was. He was not perfect. But he was a hard worker. And no one is perfect anyway. Uh, and uh, some people also wanted me to ask you um, if you know about Genius's relationship um, when he was still alive with his father. Was his uh, relationship with his father perfect? Well, I never saw anything wrong with the relationship with the father. It was like he, his father and son relationship. He would go and, they didn't stay in the same house. Uh, Daddy stays about, I think, 100 meters, 100, 200 meters away from Daddy's, uh, from Genius' house. So they saw it. I mean, Genius had time for himself and he put his friends first before everyone else but that did not mean that he did not love his family he loved his family he had a strange way of showing it but he loved his family he had a good relationship daddy had his own he's got his own um, gas business that he was running or that he is running he was also found of football sundays he played football a, a football uh, club that genius sponsored it was pioneer gases so i don't think that he had a bad relationship with his dad 
Okay, and now let's talk about the estate, genius estate. We saw that... Um, and I am not... To, let, let's correct one thing. It's been all over social media that Zodwa is claiming his estate, he wants to take the house, he wants to do this. That's why we want, we have this platform to clear all these issues. I do not want to take genius house. As much as the house is mine, I lived with that guy for 10 years, and you know by the rules of Zimbabwe, if you live with a man for six months, automatically married or not married, you become married. So whatever you acquire together, you are supposed to share 50-50. Genius, we built that house together from scratch. The first brick, we put it in together. At that time, Genius was staying with me in my Highlands house when we built in that house. We built it from day one until it was finished. I don't want anything to do, the, to do with the house. Yes, genius last wish, he wanted that house to be um, turned into a hotel. I support that 100%. I'm going to make sure that comes to pass. I'm going to assist the family to make sure that that hotel is a success and we advertise, we market it. I run a travel agency. So through Traverse Travel, we're going to make sure that we market the Dombosha Mansion to become the hotel that genius uh, wanted it to be. I'm not claiming anything there. I don't want anything to do with Genius House. As much as I'm, I'm, I'm a part owner, but I don't want anything to I've got my own properties. I've got my own house, which is equally as big as the Dombo Shower Mansion, which Genius himself built. He helped me build my house. So I've got no reason to want to get his house when he's dead, when I could have gotten it when he was alive. So uh, that is... Whoever thinks I'm going to do that, they've got something wrong. They are, I mean, there's something wrong with them. I, we've never discussed the house, either with his family or myself with my friends. I've got no intentions whatsoever. My intention is to make sure I support Juliet, Nelia, and Baba. To make sure that everything that genius owned, his legacy lives on. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to help them, assist them whenever they need me. They can call on me anytime. We have got no beef. We're very close, actually. Genius or not genius, we've got our own bond that we've always had over the years. That genius made possible. So I've got nothing against anybody, especially his immediate family. And we also want to talk about Remo's relationship with Jinimbi. I'm touching on all the issues, the nitty gritties, the rumors, the gossip, you know, social media. Mm -hmm. Some people are saying that now Remo is going around collecting Jinimbi's debts. Remo, he was behind what happened. Collecting Jinimbi's what? This, Remo, that. He's collecting what? Um, Jinimbi, people that are owing Jinimbi. He's going around oh. collecting people that are owing Jinimbi, like collecting debts. No, that's not correct. As far as I know, I speak to Rimo almost every day. Rimo, in his own capacity as Rimo, he has never once mentioned who owes Jinimbi, who doesn't owe Jinimbi, or I'm going to collect this or collect that. If he was collecting anything, it would be for the good of Genius Estate. But I've never had Rimo one day telling me that I have to go and collect this from this person. Rimo was working together with Genius at the Dreams Nightclub, which I think he's still doing that. His interest is to make sure that Genius' dream of dreams lives on. So the people that think, you know, when someone has gone, is gone, people will say so many things. We love Rimo so much. Rimo is because of the same Rimo that we had a body also to bury. Genius could have also perished like all the other the people that um, that perished in that accident. It's God that protected Genius' body so that we had something to remember him with. So saying Remo is doing these things behind uh, our back, that is not correct. It is actually not right. Those people that are saying these malicious talks about Remo, please, you must stop. We are still mourning. The same Remo is mourning. Remo was living with Genius in the same house. Remo stayed with Genius drove with genius he was literally with genius 24 7. he was the first person to arrive at the accident scene because he was driving behind genius so for people to think that remo would go up, uh, around collecting whatever genius had out there it's wrong it's absolutely wrong and i've not heard of anybody out of uh, genius friends that has gone out there claiming that genius was all this i'm collecting or i'm representing as far as i know Whoever owes genius, they're supposed to come to the family or go to the executor and say whatever they owe genius and um, pay it to the executor or approach the family. As far as we're concerned, no one has done that to date. So it is wrong 
for people to think that Rimo is doing that? All right, Zodwa, let's talk about Genius funeral. Um, the way Genius was mourned, it, I think it's still talk of the town, but it was, it is still talk of the town. The guy was mourned, Zodwa. I mean, kudos to you, his friend. Um, it's so shocking how many people came out to mourn uh, Genius. A lot of people on the streets. I, I remember talking to you uh, a day after a day after the burial. You're telling me that it took you guys five hours to get to to to, to Lobosha from from the city. So. Was this genius money that you guys used to bury him for his funeral? Or what happened? All his friends and my friends came together. Genius was a people's person. And all the friends that loved Genius, friends of Jinimbi, they came together and put money together to bury Genius. We were not about to start asking the relatives or the people that were working Genius that, oh, please give us money to bury Genius. He was a people's person. Jinimbi would have done the same thing for any of his friends if they, 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 they were to, to pass away. He would have brought people together collected money from friends, people will contribute and they will bury that person. So the same thing happened to Genius. All his friends came together, all my friends, we all came together, put money together, and we did not want any penny from the family, not that they could not afford, but because we felt Genius was our person as friends. He was our person. We wanted to give him a befitting burial. What he would have wanted Genius was a very flamboyant guy. Genius wanted the, the light, the, the, the beautiful things in life, the, the finer things of life. That's what he wanted. So we are the ones who knew exactly what he would have wanted. So that is why the friends took over. We asked, of course, we asked for permission from the family if we could do it. The boys bought him a, a coffin from South Africa. He loved Versace, as you all know. His coffin was a Versace coffin. It came from South Africa. And people say that he bought his own coffin before he died. That's not correct. That coffin was bought by Genius friends from South Africa. Then it was brought into Zimbabwe. And uh, Dove's uh, funeral services came through for us. They assisted us in a very great way. And, um, you know, it was, you know, as much as we were mourning, but all the friends made it easy for us to bury genius. All right, Zodo, and did you, did you and your friends or maybe the family compensate um, the other families or the fatalities, also the uh, wonder fit that uh, genius had an accident with? I think as far as I know, I wasn't, um, I was busy mourning, but I know that uh, money was sent to Moana's family uh, I'm not sure about the Mozambican family. I'm also not sure about uh, the guys in Malawi because I was not communicating with them. But I was told that some money was sent to, to, to Highfields, to Moana's family. So I, I don't know much. I can't uh, speak for those. But I know Genius friends were talking to the families, to all the families. So I don't know to what extent. I can't say in figures how much was given out. But I know, especially for the Moana girl, they were given something. By the family okay so you have a lot of friends Zotwa. i mean we cannot conclude this without uh, mentioning we spoke about this earlier on who exactly is that your friend that would be like remo i mean we will all die we are all in the departure lounge we're just waiting for a different date who is that friend that would be like remo and kit get for you um, I've got a BFFL, I call it my BFFL, my be best friend for life. Her name is Dania Kabwebwe. She's a very good friend of mine. We've been friends forever, you know. She's one person that I know that if anything was to happen to me today, she'll leave everything she's doing and she'll, she'll come and be there. We've got a group called the Rich Cousins. The Rich Cousins, are the, there's about 14 of us. Those are the girls that came that were with me from the day, the time Genius was pronounced dead. They were with me at the accident scene. They were with me at the funeral. They were with me from day one until Genius was buried. There's Tandy, there's Belinda, there's Craig. There's so many of them. There's Nobukosi, there's uh, Marvelous. There's so many of them. There's Zari in South Africa. There's Esther. Uh, look, I've got so many friends. But all those friends, I know they'll drop what they're doing and come and be with me or be with my kids should anything happen to me. But the first person that I know, if something happened to me today, my kids will pick up the phone. Auntie Danya, 
this is what has happened. My kids will do that. Auntie Zari, this is what has happened. Auntie Tandi, I know all my friends, if they were cold, they will be there for me. But best friend for life, Danya Kabwebwe. Okay. So, and uh, Zongwa, if someone is to, it's too late for us to talk about Jinim is gone. But I mean, you were with Jinim from the time he started. You told me that you met Jinim. I don't want to say when he had nothing, but you, you, you grew, Jinim grew with you. So, there are some guys, I mean, there are so many guys out there that want to to learn or to know how Jinimbi did it. How did Jinimbi really do it, Zodwa? How did he become that billionaire, rather? Um, I mean, how did he survive that lavish life? Jinimbi was a hustler. And Jinas liked the finer things in life. Hence his hard work. He worked so hard, so much that sometimes you will feel sorry for him. You'll come home so tired because he would be working 24-7, thinking of new ideas. We must do this. If I do this, maybe this will happen. Let me try this. He started uh, working. When I met him, he was uh, running Pioneer Gases. That's what he was doing. That's his first love. So that's what he did first, and this is what he was still doing up to today. Then uh, he started doing other businesses. He started doing... Um, uh, petroleum selling fuel this was a business that was doing when he was living in south africa bringing fuel to zimbabwe taking fuel to south africa he then bought a company in botswana i think in 2013 2014 he was selling gas there in botswana as well so he's always been a hustler wanting to do different things things that were going to make him the person that he wanted you know the public knew jinimbi jinimbi but they didn't know what he had to do to make that name stick he always wanted the whole world to know that Jinimbi, the money boy, Jinimbi, this lifestyle, everything was about his lifestyle. Everything was about how he lived his life. That's what he did. So he never wanted to fail. He also never wanted to lake anything. As much as when I met him, he was also starting his business. I had also just started mine. Mine was three years old when I met him. I started Traverse 2003 and I met Jinas 2006. My business maybe grew faster than his business. So whatever money I made, I would help him. There was times when I would be down, then he would be up. He would give me money, we would work together. You know, it was always who has, whose business is doing better at that particular time. And we will bail each other out. That was how we managed or he managed to build his empire. I'm just reading comments here. So people are asking how can they also join the rich cousins group? <laughs> <laughs> the rich cousins is not possible to join. You know what happens, how it came about. We've got um, the 14 friends. So what we do is every, we, we give each other money on our birthdays. There's um, a certain amount, um, like a subscription that we give when like, for example, it's my birthday. Everyone, will, 14 of us will bring a certain amount of money each. It's the same amount for everyone. So that money is to, it's like a birthday gift. Others will still buy birthday presents over and above that. Normally, we we'll travel outside the country, a destination of choice. We buy our own tickets. And then the birthday person would either do the dinner or whatever they decide to do a party on the actual birthday so we sponsor ourselves in everything except for the actual birthday that's when the owner of the birthday will either do a dinner or do a party for us i don't think we we we, we we've got room for more people in the group sorry <laughs> No, but there's another group for the poor cousins that was trying to start. Maybe we grow them from, those are the ones that we are mentoring. So we'll mentor them, then they graduate into the rich cousins. You really made me laugh. Okay. <laughs> there's a story, I really wanted to avoid this, but it keeps coming up. Did genius have a child? Okay, uh, up to the time of his death, none that we know of. There's only one that we knew of, uh, which we both looked after because they, we had taken that child in with genius. We thought it, the child was his child, but we did a DNA and the DNA was negative.
It was all over the newspapers. I'm sure those that read newspapers, they know about that. So not that we know of. Genius never had a child. I know they say there's a child in South Africa. And that child that they put in South Africa who said, uh, why did you leave me? That's my daughter. That uh, Genius was wearing a red thing and with a young girl holding him like this. That's my daughter that was holding Genius. That's the child that they've given a name, Tatenda or whatever name they've given that girl. That's Melissa. That's my daughter. So biologically, no. But yes, he raised my kids. Yeah, but there's something you told me before the interview. You said if anybody has, thinks they have genius kids... They must come they along. They must bring the kids. We'll do a DNA. Mm -hmm. They must bring the kids. If so they have... We, 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 you know what? We, we, if anyone has a child for genius, like... I'm sure, well, I don't know, they wouldn't approach me, maybe they, because um, they wouldn't approach me, maybe they'd have, they would approach the, the family, that they're the child. But yes, let the child come. But yes, a DNA is awaiting whoever thinks as a child is genius. Fortunately now, you can do a DNA with the father, you can do a DNA with the sisters. So that can happen. I would not allow anyone to come and claim genius legacy because they think they, their child is genius child because automatically if someone is genius says child automatically they have to claim genius legacy we've got no problem with giving them what belongs to their dad but the dna must come first someone says Ginebi was married before you raised that woman she was really sick in 2014 she's very well she's alive i know her i've met her and uh, she's not sick at all Okay, and someone says, is Pokelo part of the rich cousins? No, 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 Pokelo, no, she's not. <laughs> Pokelo is a daughter to me, so she's not. Her mom, her mom is a big sister. Okay, and what is your relationship like with uh, Zari and um, um, Daniel Platinum? Zari, Zari is a very good friend of mine. She's based in South Africa with Diamond Platinum. I'm the godmother to Zari and Diamond's children. I met Zari way before she met, um, before she dated Diamond Platinum, when she was still married to Ivan, who then passed away. And then, uh, but I think they divorced when she met Diamond and uh, they started dating. And then uh, Tifa came along, then Prince Milan came along. So we have a very good relationship with both of them, both uh, Diamond and, uh, and Zari. They are, they are family. And so people are saying, Jinim is gone, Zodwa, can we hook up? Oh, I have a lot of, I have a lot of guys for you here. <laughs> <laughs> give, them my, gi give them my number. But I'm still mourning though, so. Hey. So you guys, She's still mourning. I mean, she's she's the widow for for a while. So you just inbox me and I'll give you her numbers. Anyway, thank you so so much, Zodi. I think we have tried to clear the air and answer all the questions. It's been a very good chat and my deepest, my very deepest condolences. I mean, this is the millionth time I'm saying this to you that you had to lose Jinim. I know how tight you guys were. I mean, I never used to. I used to come and eat my guru. Um, and Saza, you know how you people would... Yeah, he was a traditional <laughs> man. He loved his my his traditional food, so he didn't eat these mm. salads, the pizza. He, you know, he actually never ate pizza. He would not eat pizza because he didn't understand what pizza was. So he would uh -huh. eat his maguru, his matumbu, his mabonzo, and his Saza. That's all he ate. So, and his rice in the evening, he loved rice and chicken at night. But during the day, weekends, everyone who came home to visit, they knew that on Saturday we we'll cook 20 kgs of uh, mabonzo. And from lunch hour until 5 p.m., whoever came, there was enough for everyone. He's, he was a people's person. His house was always packed with people. Hence this number of people that came for his funeral. Mm, so uh, people are asking, Zod, how old are you? I'm 48, proudly 48, to be 49 in February and 50 in 2022 and i'm throwing a massive 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 party in the hotel. 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 mansion hotel Yay. That's good. and yeah, the white that's parties good. are going to continue by the way as a as, as a memory of to Jinimbi. 10th of october every year we'll try to make sure that we always have something going on at the mansion in memory of genius 
Okay, and among Gia's friends, do you see anybody who's going to continue his legacy of, uh, you know, Jinimbi, my life, your TV, Chapopo, you know, he was just... It would, it, you know what, that. even if anyone tried to do it, I don't think it would be the same. So... I'm sure they'll be posting videos to remember what he used to do and all that. I don't know. Let's watch the space and see. But the close friends of Genius, they were not as loud as he was. So I don't think any one of them will be able to do it. But you never know. And the white parties were not a ritual or some sort of... So never a ritual. Those white parties started 2010. I was there when the first party happened. There were no rituals. It just was white party because he wanted to dress in white and he wanted something that uh, th that was said, this is what Jinimbi started, which is the white parties. So they were never about any rituals. It's people, people don't want to listen to people that have something of their own. It's like me at Travis Travel. Every year I've got parties that I do. They're not rituals. I'm thanking my clients for the business that they've given me throughout the year. Only that I don't have a dress code, which is it's all white. We dress differently. We've got a different theme every year. So people can't say it's a ritual because I'm having a Christmas party every year. It's only this year because of COVID, we couldn't do that. But every other year, since 2003, we have Christmas parties to thank our clients at Traverse Travel. So Genia is having a, a birthday party every year. It doesn't mean it's a ritual. It's what he wanted to do. It's what he enjoyed doing. Which is why if we're going to continue doing the parties, rit ritual, what ritual? To benefit what? The snake for meeting. Let, uh, get your own snake and have your own white party and I let the snake. One. You, you might, you must have some because you come from Nigeria. I'm told they in Nigeria they there's the juju metals of juju. Give me one snake as well, then it can vomit. If, if I, my husband comes from Nigeria, but if there were easy snakes or to find snakes in nigeria would i be in this cold in europe you see that's what i'm saying so if it's not easy to find a snake that can vomit man what makes you think or what makes the people think it's easy for genius to find a snake he brings it in his house then it vomits for him and it means if they're saying he had a snake i also had a snake i you know what i i wanted to wrap up this but there are three questions zodwa where did you buy your wig she must not leave without saying some Debele words. She's Debele. She should be proud Debele. And this one you need to answer. Why was Passion Java banned from the funeral? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not aware that he was banned. <laughs> no, but the way you're laughing, tell us. No, I'm not aware. <laughs> I'm not aware that he was banned. Who says he was banned? I'm not aware. You know what? I'm not going to answer things that I know nothing about. I was busy mourning, so I never saw him come if he came. I never heard about him being banned if he was banned. I don't know. Well, my wig, I got it from Craig Studio. Craig Studio is in Arare. It's beautiful, right? My makeup was done by Deliwe. Makeup bar, still at Craig Studio. And I know I'm beautiful. Ni mushe, ni as tanda, ni as badja. Proudly a closer girl from Fingo location. Mbembezi, kovula wayo, kuntu tuziatun. You've heard my Ndebele. I'm very not actually. I don't speak Ndebele. I'm a closer girl. If I speak closer, my closer is so deep. And so many of you didn't take that on. Ngoba man, um closer, um closer, otwele. Opuma Mbembez, Emam Fenguin. That's me. So what does that mean? What are you saying? I'm telling them that I'm a closer girl coming from Fingo location in Mbembez. I'm, I'm closer. I'm proud ukutle. to be closer. Someone says, Ukutle, eh, Ukutle says, Ukutle says, Ukutle says, Ukutle says, Ukutle says, We are beautiful, we are proud of you. Ah, nice. Okay. Thank you so much, Zodwa. Oh, you dodged the question. Which what one? Was the relationship? Okay, what was the relationship like with Jinimbi and uh, Passion Java? Um, look, they, I think they had their own Instagram fights that they were doing, but I don't think it, um, I don't think they had a bad relationship. I've never seen them together, so I can't really talk for either of them. But um, the, uh, besides what I saw on social media, 
So I can't say what I saw on social media was exactly what was happening between the two of them. I heard Mudiwa saying that even on his birthday, they called each other and all that. So I don't know. I wasn't there, so I wouldn't know. I think passion job, I can, I mean, I know you, you interviewed him the last time. He can answer that one better because at least he's alive. Yeah, Genius right. can't answer for yeah. himself, but passion, I'm sure he can answer that question better. And who is Shelly? Someone is asking if Shelly is part of the will. Who's Shelly? Shelly was genius PR manager. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Anyway, thank you so much, Zotwa, for your time. I mean, I think you've really answered all the questions. You've taken one it. hour of my time. One hour. I was one supposed to be sleeping. Of... One hour of my time. I sleep at nine. Jilimbi, my life, your TV. My life, your TV. <laughs> <laughs> we'll surely miss him, but anyway. Everyone, I mean, we all have our days. One day it will be me, tomorrow it could be you. But, you know, it, it, he, he, he enjoyed his life. So we're going to miss him. May his soul rest in peace. But we will yeah. forever miss him. And we will forever, especially the Genimbi TV. People loved it. I hated it because of what used to happen on that live thing. And you say to me, problem with you, Zodwa, you, this is social media. You know, you know I the real Janimbi. This is social media. Don't mix the two. He said <laughs> social media. He says, no, bang, I will. No, from social media. You know, she social media, social media. Do it as social media. Do fans are my fans. You know, Ziba, the real me. That's what he used to do. So that was for his fans, not for his family. Us were not allowed to watch it. Though we ended up seeing it, you know, people look screenshot and forward and all that. I never once watched it because I, every time after that, I would fight with him. We've got kids but that will be watching. But he entertained his friends and his friends mourned him. The guy was mourned, so it was. I, I don't think I've seen anybody in Zimbabwe who's been mourned the way he was mourned. He had a very, uh, he had an impact on, especially in the youth, with the youth kids, with the youth. You know, when we were coming, the young kids had placards. Asking who is going to buy us pizza? Who is going to buy me school shoes? Who is going to pay my school fees? You know, they, all of them had different things written on those placards. So it means that he 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 really did something good for his village, for the villagers. You know, he did something good for Domboshaw. Um, I'm sure they are the most hurt. They, he was stolen away from them. He was going to do more for them. If maybe he had been given another five or ten years, he would have transform that village to something far much better than what it is right now that village has got value now if you buy land there i'm sure you won't pay though there's no title deeds i'm sure the land there is very expensive now because of the dombashawa mansion and the roads that he put because the when we were building there was no tad road so he put mm. that tad road himself from the main roads right through to the mansion mm. bye josie that he used to say we are enjoying it. I mean, that's what I was at Genimbi. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> when you stay with someone, others end up saying you look alike. Have you never seen when you stay with your husband, they end up saying he's your brother, you look alike. So because I spoke to him all the time, I knew, you know, I, I can literally imitate some of the things that he did, but those are our so, memories now. Uh, we would Definitely, surely, deeply miss uh, Jinimbi. So, but I think we still have people like you. We have Kit Kat, Remo, yeah. you, all his friends. I mean, it's good that you want to keep his legacy on and uh, the white parties will continue. Um, you will take care of uh, the hotel and assist the family. That is very good. So, thank you so much for your time. Thank Any you, Any last words to our viewers, uh, uh, inspirational words to women that also want to be like you. A lot of them were inboxing me. How can we get mentorship and stuff like that? Oh, sorry. Um... You know, sorry, my, my daughter just interrupted me. Sorry about that. You know what, what? What I think, what I would say to the women out there, guys, don't give up in your dreams. I know people have failed. They've tried to do businesses. You've fallen, you've woken up, or especially those that have fallen. When you fall once, wake up, fall again, wake up, fall again. Don't give up. Don't do a business that you don't understand. Do something that you understand, that you're passionate about. Write your visions. Aim high, the sky is the limit. Ask for advice. 
No one has ever made it without guidance. No one has ever made it without mentorship. No one has ever made it on their own. Even me at my age, where I am today, I still go to people to ask for advice. I've failed several times. Travel Travel is actually literally closed at some stage. But because I had people like uh, Dr. Mangunja, who, who actually, by the way, every time I have business challenges, I go to him for advice. He's always been there for me. It doesn't matter what time of the night I would call him, dog, this is what is going on. He would assist at any given time. So those that have succeeded in life, don't be ashamed to go and ask for advice. Don't be ashamed to ask how they've made it in life. The reason why most of us fail is because you think that, oh, because she's made it, or they show off. There's nothing like that. Humble yourself. Kneel down. Go to the person who has done better than you. Ask them, how have you done it? How can I improve my own business? That way, we'll be able to succeed. But if we are so, if for too much pride, you don't want to ask. Some people have failed before, but they've picked themselves up and they've run and done their business as well. So do the same. Ask them, how have you done it? I heard you close your business 20, 2008, but now we are the best travel agents in the country. How did you do it? Ask and advice will be given. We don't just give advice if you don't ask. But if you ask, we'll guide. Even if it's the same business that you're doing still will give you advice there's so many clients for everybody in the country so don't ever say because zodra is doing a travel agents therefore josie can't do the same business you'll do it just do it and we'll, we'll share the, the notes and everybody has got their own different market that's my advice so in case people want to get in touch with you some people are saying can you start a page to mentor us uh, any email address please don't give your number because there are a lot of guys Zodra, please, uh, quickly mourn. We are waiting for you. So, <laughs> your phone will stop ringing. I think, I, I think, Josie, you can give them my email address. I'll send it to you. I mean, you you have it already. Those that want yeah. it can communicate with you directly, and then you can give them, and uh, you, you can give them my email address. And only serious yeah, people, I please. Your sister, Noma Temba, I think she's watching. She's also someone who's doing very well in. in yeah, Noma Temba is, you know, that she's one of the young girls that I'm very proud of, actually. When I met Noma, she was working for one shop in, uh, in Eastgate. She was a sales lady there. She's really grown her brand. If you see most of the clothes that I wear, I get, I get them from Porsche. She's doing extremely well. I'm very, very, very proud of her. She's one of those people, she accepts criticism. She accepts criticism. Noma is doing well. Yeah, she's doing extremely well, yeah. So, right, Josie, thank you so much, Zotra. We will we'll go into two hours because there are a lot of yes. questions, a lot of comments for you, but thank you so much for joining us. And once again, may Jinim be so rest in peace. And please continue to be there for his father and the sisters. I mean, obviously, you are their pillar. They need you right now. Thank you so much, Zotra. Thank you so much, Josie. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. There you have it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I was speaking to you. That was wrong. I will see. How are you? How are you? How are Save you the life, please. Hmm? How are you? Hey. Hey, I got tired today. Eh? Seated here. You were arranging? Ah, the way, the way. Oh, so you were just sitting upside here. Upside down. Yeah. How do I think? How are you girls? How was your day? It was good, eh? Oh, no, not me. Good night, guys. Good night, good night, good night. I need to end this and I don't know how to. Mama Malik. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so in camera boy <laughs> Guys, I'm trying to switch in this life. It's not the ending. <laughs>